Welcome to Broke Ass to Badass, where heart-led entrepreneurs learn to build the businesses and lives of their dreams with confidence, ease, and joy. This is the anti-hustle movement, and we're your coaches in badassery, Kimi and Pua. Find out more at bledigital.com, and wherever you're listening to this, be sure to click subscribe so you never miss an episode. Hey guys, we are thrilled to introduce you to Ashley Strong of Home Intentionally. Just over two months ago, this powerhouse won a scholarship for our program, Broke Ass to Badass. And what Ashley has created from that pivotal moment is truly mind-blowing. Uh, in this interview, which is a recording of a live interview that we did with Ashley, she shares how she transformed her mess into a powerful message and really beautiful business that is helping people to fall in love with their environment and hack their home life and really just create more beautiful white space in their life. So sit back, relax, and enjoy our interview with Ashley Strong. All right, everybody, we are back again with another amazing badass, Ashley Strong. Some of you may remember that Ashley was our scholarship winner for B2B back at the end of August. And we were just talking before this about, wow, it's only been two and a half months. And it just, uh, yeah, it's what, what in a, you, you've created so much in two and a half months and I've shifted so much. And it's yeah. just been a, like glorious watching your badassery and watching your journey. And today we're so excited to have you share with our audience and uh, everybody here just who you are, what you do. And secretly, Pua and I are just like, we're, we're hoping to pick your brain a little bit about how we can be um, a little more organized and uh, efficient <laughs> in our home life. And so you, you are the master in this area. And so please, please, please share with us about uh, your beautiful business. And yeah, just a little bit about the journey to where you are today. Yeah. Wow. It has been an incredible journey. Uh, last two and a half weeks have been, or two and a half, two and a half weeks. Feels like it hasn't been very long. Two and a half months, um, have been just insane, just insane. Um, the amount of people that I have met, the amount of things I've been able to get done, just this course was everything. Okay. So I'm going to kind of backtrack a little bit to give you the backstory so you can understand what brought me here. So as I am a mom of two, which is my most favorite job that I have. Um, And before I had kids, I was very career oriented, healthcare focused, like did not ever consider anything outside of that world. That's what I knew. That's what I was good at. Um, Didn't think of a life without healthcare, essentially, because you can't have a life without healthcare. You kind of need it but I don't have to be in it. So that's okay. Um, and having my, my daughter was one thing. And if I'm completely honest, obviously having a kid in and of itself changes your life. Um, so massive changes there. There was a lot of stress that came with that. Um, and huge changes in myself when I went back to work. And, and in that it was just more or less, okay, how do I be the mom that I want to be the person that I want to be still show up for work and be a good employee, like on time, most of the time, you know, and like have my, my house together, not like HGTV perfect, but like, okay. Right. Like functional. Um, and then surprise, surprise, six months later, I was pregnant with my son. Great. Yes, I know how that happened. And so, you know, to, to all my surprise, still trying to figure out this mom thing, still trying to figure out how to be a working mom. And now I'm going to have a second baby. Now, in true Ashley form, I don't like to make things simple. Like, I, that's not a thing. Um, so not only did I decide to have a second baby, I decided to get a promotion, change jobs within the same organization and move into a house doing it all just a few just a few weeks um before i have my son like totally normal that's a normal thing um and (laughs) because of all of that and no preparation for maternity leave maternity leave was 
terrible. Terrible. Um, the three of us probably cried more often than we didn't. It was really sad. And, uh, you know, in that, it, it, it took a long time um, for me to really understand what was going on. But I was in the thick of postpartum depression and anxiety. Um, I've never really considered having to, like, never really considered myself someone who was depressed. Like I would have highs and lows like anybody else and, you know, bad days, good days, but this was different and it was affecting every part of my life and it was affecting my relationships. It was affecting our house. Like I had just kind of given up on everything. Um, and there was one night. So my, my daughter is two and a half. My son is, um, just over a year. And most nights on maternity leave looked like me going back and forth between their rooms and oftentimes sleeping in a toddler bed. Also totally normal. Um, and uh, there was one night that I remember just leaning over his crib and praying that he would sleep for more than like, you know, 20 minutes. I just needed somebody to sleep for a period of time. Fell asleep in the toddler bed and woke up in pure panic. And um, I, cause I, he hadn't woken up for his normal, like feeding. Um, so I ran into his room, I touched his hand and his hand was cold. Now the air was on. Okay. Like he was fine. Um, but that sent me into this kind of place where it was like this flash of what his life was in just the few, you know, weeks that he had been here. And all I saw was from his perspective of life of, of me who was always crying, who was always anxious. Um, when I'm not doing that, I'm agitated, I'm angry, I'm yelling, but not the mom that he needed and not one that was capable of giving him the life that he deserved um, and the life that my, my daughter deserves. Um, and so that was kind of a, a pretty big wake up call to say things have to change. Like I can't keep living this way. They can't keep living this way. So I, you know, did what I needed to do, got, you know, got help, saw my doctor, all of those things. Um, but one of the biggest things that I did was decide to change my mindset. And instead of laying down and just taking it and being a victim of, of having postpartum depression and wondering why this happened to me and what I could have done to prevent it, you know, as your brain does. I decided to say, this is an opportunity for me to look at how I'm living and make some real changes. Like I didn't get here overnight. Um, I, but there are things that I can control and that I can change. Um, and so that kind of sent me down this path of where do I start? Right. Like I knew that there were a lot of things that I wanted to change or needed to change, but I needed to start somewhere. Now for me, I'm the oldest of six. I've always lived in small places. Organization has always been very something very natural to me and something very calming. Like, not normal. Cleaning is very calming to me. Like, <laughs> give me a messy cupboard to clean and I will be so happy. <laughs> My day will be on fire. Um, so that's where I started. Like, I needed to work on my environment. And I know for me personally, my environment, if my environment's cluttered, my brain is cluttered. I can't think I'm not myself. So I knew I needed to start there. Um, and I took a different approach this time. <laughs> so it took me, it only took me 30 years. It's amazing. Um, that I had spent so much time. It's something natural. It's something quick for me to do. It's something I enjoy doing. So I would spend so much time reorganizing our house, cleaning, all of this stuff, putting tons of energy in this. And then by Wednesday, my house would look legitimately like a frat just came and just destroyed it. Like, <laughs> I, I mean, no joke. There were times where I felt like I was honestly like walking around with a plastic bag, like just picking stuff up. I've never been to a frat party, but my imagination allows me to like go pretty, pretty big. Um, it's pretty accurate. Yeah. yeah. Like I just imagine it just being ridiculous. Um, and my husband would prefer like if he could, his organization system would just be things on the floor. So long story short, I started asking him where he was putting things um, and understanding how his brain worked and how he organized and what he needed from our environment. I know, weird. 
<laughs> collaboration is odd. Um, and from that and just putting my Nancy Drew hat on, my little detective hat, I was able to notice where he was putting things, what made sense to him between that and just talking about it. And I was able to create systems in my home that actually made sense for both of us <laughs> and worked for having toddlers to the point where our house maint maintains reasonable cleanliness, like not perfect, but clean. And like, there's not crap all over the place. I can maintain my home in about 20 minutes a day. Both of us work full time. I have two toddlers. Like that's nearly impossible. So that was fantastic. And, and that left me to having so much more time to focus on everything else. And I could sit in the living room with my kids and play with them and not stare at the fact that I had dishes in the sink that needed to get cleaned. Um, I could actually truly be in the moment. And then I was like, okay, this is, this is pretty cool. My husband started noticing it. He's like, you have to share this. Like, this is unbelievable. You have to share this with anybody that will listen. This is crazy. At first I was like, I, you're nuts. No one needs, like, no one wants to know that I put bins in my refrigerator and label that. That's weird for all intents and purposes. Like it works, but it's weird. Um, so I, I don't need to share it. Well, part of my whole journey, and there's lots of things that I did, but part of my journey is I started listening to podcasts during my, during my work day to get me through my work day because I'm now in a clock or in a office where it's really quiet, like a library. I don't do well. I have to talk or do something. So I started listening to podcasts. They kind of became like a weird support group in that time for me. Started listening to your podcast and some other podcasts. Like just, um, I had like searched just like mom podcasts, started listening to different entrepreneurial moms that were just doing shit, like just changing their life and doing things. And then a friend of mine told me about your podcast and I was listening to it. And I'm like, I want to be these guys' friend. And like, this is awesome. But then the, it like, I had no intention of starting a business at all, like going down this road. I knew I wasn't happy in my job, but I didn't really know what that meant. And I, at that time was like, I just, I was in survival mode. Um, and the more and more I listened, the more and more I just felt really called to reach out to you to know more, to think about this whole concept of business. Um, I, of course, reached out to you guys earlier. Like, I well, I, I've bothered you many times, filling your basket with all sorts of things. Never um, bothering us. We love <laughs> it. We love that you reach out. Like that, that we always think about that and, and the, the courage and the bravery and the, the bold badassery of just being like, I'm going to send them an email. I'm going to send yeah. them an email. We just talked about in our last podcast, how we like <laughs> so admire and love when people yes. do that. So anyway, sorry to interrupt. Keep yeah. going. <laughs> no, I was just, you know, fangirling really hard. <laughs> um, sending them emails all the time. Like, I love that podcast. I want to be you. Not weird. Um, and <laughs> you know, from, and at the time I wasn't, I don't think I was ready. Like I wasn't ready to embark on this journey. Um, August, I was getting to the point of, I had already started this blog. I was trying to get my message out there, but in, by, by August, um, I was kind of in this place of like, do I keep doing this? Like, are people really, I don't know if people are really, you know, participating. Do they want to know about this? There's a lot of people out there that are talking about similar things. I don't know what to do. I also then at the same time, like this all was happening at the same time. I had those thoughts. I was listening to your podcast still. And I just kept, it was almost a, a weird daily thing that was like, you, like somehow you need to, you need to be like work with these women. Like they're going to help you. This is what you need. But of course I don't listen to myself the first few times. And I was listening to one of the podcasts where you started talking about um, the Facebook challenge about the scholarship and all stuff. And I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm going to participate. Like, I'm just, I'm going to do this and see what happens. And at the same time I was doing that, that week, I was interviewing for another promotion at work. And what was odd about it was this was a promotion that a year ago I would have been like, I need, like, this is what I need to do. This is what I have to have. Like I would have been all in on this. And instead I kind of, I mean, to be honest with you, I half-assed it. I just was like, I showed up because they said you would be great for this position. 
And it was this whole just, uh, you know, just whole scenario of just odd things that happened with this interview. And the day that I didn't get the job and was the same day of the final day of the, of the Facebook challenge. And so I didn't get this job and it, and this, this whole like conversation happened with the, the director and it was just, it left me feeling so partly saying, okay, I know there's something else out there, but a little part of me going like, what, like, what do I do now? Like, this is like, at some point I have to figure something out. Like, this is crazy. Um, and that day I was driving home from work, still a little kind of bummed listening to the final day of the Facebook challenge. And, um, you were about to draw the name and I was at the stop sign. I'm like, there's no, there's no freaking way. Like my name is going to get drawn. And I was getting like spotting reception too. So I'm like, I can't, like, I can't handle this. I just, so I was driving. I decided to go through the stop sign. Probably shouldn't have. Because then you guys announced my name and I nearly lost my shit as I was driving. I had to pull over. But it led me to this just wonderful adventure where I discovered so much about myself. I did amazing things for my business, but the the just in and of itself, like the mindset work and what I learned about me and how I work and who I serve and and the community that you guys have built that I was so blessed to be a part of the people that I've met um, and every call to be on every call and just witness the amazing things that everybody was doing and the amazing stories like those in and of themselves would just fill me up. Like I, I just felt so alive after each call and I still do. Like it's just, you, you feel so energized by everybody else's awesome. And there's always so many, there's always someone who can answer your question or who can lift you up if you're having a bad day. I mean, the, these people that I've met, you know, in, in your group, they've become my friends. They've become this amazing support group that like, I can't like, I, they're on my, you know, my list of things I'm grateful for every day. Like, I, you know, like you guys are on my list of things I'm grateful every day. This program is like, it's been literally life changing and who goes through such a significant life change in two and a half months, like in, in a, in, in something that touches so many different pieces of their life. Like it, it, that's life changing. It's not just, hasn't just been building a business. It's been life changing. You were able to help me realize the life that I was really looking for. Like I just didn't know how to get there. And then you gave me this beautiful path. And like, apparently I was waiting for permission for somebody to be like, yeah, just <laughs> be yourself and be a badass. Like, go do it. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> You're like, I can do that. Oh, that's great. Hey, and, right. and like, so for you to say that, I just want to like bring attention to the transformation that you in particular created for yourself in eight weeks. Because mm-hmm. I remember our first call and you were like, well you know, I have, I, I'm, I'm pretty good at like helping people to organize their homes. And I think I want to do something about that. Um, and I was like, okay, cool. Like, what is your, what does your life look like right now? And you're like, well, I work full time. Um, so I'm just trying to find the time to do this program, find the time to create this business. I don't know where that time's going to come from or, you know, how I'm going to transition. And so we spent some time talking about you leaving your job and we ended that call and you were like, <laughs> I'll think about it. And I was like, okay, cool. Think about it and we'll talk next time. And the next day you sent me a message and you were like, so January 31st, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to be done with my job. And I was like, oh shit. And it was that, that like, it was a 24 hour turnaround where your mind, mind shift, (laughs) mindset shift, shifted Mm -hmm. and you made that decision. And that is, it's like, that's a little snippet of the way that you went about this program and took action every single step of the way. And mm-hmm. if somebody could see where you were eight weeks ago and see where you are today, they wouldn't even recognize you. Like yeah. we did a call and I was like, Hey, we're going to do another Facebook challenge. You might want to jump in and just see how we do it. Uh, and then, you know, like we can help you create one for yourself. And I gave you like a very, very brief skeleton description of what a Facebook challenge looks like the next day. 
<laughs> the next day, you announce your challenge. Like that is the action taking. That is like badass action taking from a place of like, you ain't got time to be afraid. No. Nope. Right? And mm-hmm. that is why you have the service that you have. That is why every day, you don't know this, people ask us, hey, do you think Ashley would jump on a call with me? I think she, I, I really am interested in what she has. Do you think she'd be open to that? Is she, is she ready? Is her business started? I was like, freaking don't ask me, ask her. Yes, yeah. do it. Mm-hmm. Like people are, they look up to you in ways that you don't even know because of the way you take action. So I would love for you to share kind of what your mindset was like behind the scenes because to us, you were just like, you're like, cool, that sounds good. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Was there fear on your end? Was there uncertainty? What was that like? Yeah. Um, so, you know, in the, I think when I started, when I got the scholarship and after I kind of like calmed down to realize like what is happening um, and like, you know, it took me a couple of days to be like, okay, this is, this is actually real. Like we're doing this. Um, I committed that right away that this eight weeks was going to be kind of a do or die for me. Like I was going to put everything into it. Like after these eight weeks, I couldn't talk to you again. Like, honestly, like that, I was like, is, I knew you weren't going anywhere. I knew the community wasn't going anywhere, but I, I wanted to have that urgency in my mind to say, you have eight weeks to make this, like do it just because I know I respond to that kind of weird to bully yourself, but that's how I respond. Um, like you need to just don't no excuses, go all the way and do this. I mean, there were a lot of times and still are like where there's fears or, or concerns and, or you have those moments where one minute you think you are a badass and you could freaking rule the world. And then the next minute you're like, why do you think that? Like, nope, nobody showed up to your live today. What? Um, and, and, and through all of that, because of all the mindset work and everything else, I was always able to bring myself back and say, no, but I am a badass. Like I am doing this. I, every day of kind of recentering myself or when I would hit those moments to say, this is really scary. I'm not really sure how I'm going to get to January 31st. Like, I'm not really sure where this business is going, but just embracing that unknown and really just pushing through the fear and dropping. Like, I think when we did the whole, um, the activity where we looked at our badass thoughts and our broke ass thoughts, that was eye opening to me. Because when I realized how much of my broke ass thoughts were there and it helped me identify throughout the entire program when a broke ass thought would come to to mind. And then I could quickly, relatively quickly, usually I could say like, that's a broke ass thought. We're not like, we're done with that. This is why that's a broke ass thought and switch it out for one of my badass thoughts. And and just constantly doing that and just saying, I have this amazing community to support me. Kimmy and Pua aren't going anywhere. If I need help, I can reach out to them. And you, you were always there every time I reach out to you. I know you still will be. So having that too, I, I was just like, there's no, there's no reason not to do this. Like it's uncomfortable sometimes, but there's no reason not to do it. Like, and I don't regret any, any of it. There's nothing I would take back. There's nothing really... I would even do differently. Like there's just no regrets. It's just continuing to, to do it. Love it. Love it. I, I was just listening to, I think it was a uh, gala darling and, and author. And she was talking about like being a, like her, the way she thinks about it is being a dominatrix of those like lower thoughts where she's like, you know, and I think, I think about that. Right. So it's not that you're bullying yourself. It's like, yeah. you're like, Oh no, listen, yeah. we are a badass. Here's what's happening. You got the whip out, right. And like making those uh lower vibe, uh, negative broke ass thoughts, you know, yeah. put them in their place. Right. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah. so awesome. So tell us about, because I, you know, we, we alluded to the fact that we're like, really, we want to hear more about home organization because we're like, oh my gosh, you are, you're such a genius in this area. And I can so relate the, that feeling of like when my surroundings are organized and 
clean and just like, I, I feel more peaceful inside. And mm-hmm. I think that's true for so many of us. And yet when we're focused on our business, it's like easy for life, especially if we have kids or pets or whatever it is for our home environment to not reflect the inner calm that we want to have. So yeah. <laughs> tell us about how you serve and support people and about the course that you created. And it's just, I mean, that's one of the, the treats that we've got to experience is watching you create the content. We get to like absorb the content as well and, and learn from you. So share with us and maybe give us some of your um, favorite tips that people can, can take away uh, if they're like, oh my God, yeah, I'm looking around and I need some organization in my space. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, so essentially, so there's a couple ways that I serve. I have a blog. So in my blog post, it's a lot of, I take the same route that I took in my own journey. So when I brought myself through postpartum depression, through the mindset shift of it being an opportunity versus just being kind of a victim to this circumstance or, or where I was mentally, um, I needed to kind of do this twofold process where I work to declutter my mind and I work to declutter my environment. Decluttering my environment was natural for me. Decluttering my mind wasn't. There were a lot of things that I needed to build up in that piece of of my work. Um, So in my blog articles, you'll find things that I have used and done to do both. Um, A lot of it is in more of the environment piece, just because I feel like that's where I'm the expert. Um, And then the kind of mental declutter is more of just telling you and showing you where my journey has come. So if you're in that same place or you feel some of those same things, hopefully you can try some of those, those techniques or things that I've tried to help you get there too. Um, so you'll find a lot of organization um, tips, tricks, pictures, things like that on the blog itself. My Facebook community is one of my favorite places to be. Um, and that is, it's this wonderful place of people who just really want to simplify their life. They want to get, take that kind of chaotic environment and calm that streamline it so they can enjoy life. Like organization is fantastic and having an organized home is great, but if you don't have anything to look forward to at the end of the day. I mean, it's, it's such a holistic piece. It helps us with that mental health, with our energy, um, and just be able to be more productive and efficient, but it's so you can live. It's so you can enjoy the life that you want, create the life that you want. Um, and so that community is really focused on that. And I do a lot of live videos in there to actually go through, you know, two weeks ago I did going through my refrigerator and how I organize it and why and how I maintain it. Um, it's sometimes cleaning hacks and tricks. I am a, I like to find the most efficient and easy way to do things. I would rather spend my time doing other things. I like cleaning, but I'd rather spend my time doing other things. So like last week, we I did a video about how, you know, the rugs that have the um, rubber backing? Usually pretty cheap rugs. Like, in our house, someone's going to pee on it. There's going to be juice spilled, something. Like, it's it's just going to happen. So I, and I don't want to get out the carpet cleaner every time. Love my carpet cleaner, but I don't want to. Um, and I'm lazy. So I just pick up the rug. I toss it in the washer, clean it, and you can dry it. Like, so easy. And it saves me time. I love that. Um, so, you know, different kind of tips and tricks like that, uh, along with how to organize. Sometimes it's some mindset things of things that I've learned. Um, Facebook challenges go on there. I'm going to be doing a Facebook challenge on how to get your environment ready for the holidays. Um, so that will be kind of a fun, fun thing. And then my course is really a kind of a, a bigger picture, picture, holistic approach to organizing your home, but to organizing your mind, getting your mind prepared to really organize your home and in that space. Um, But it's also about coming together as a family and as a unit to maintain that space. Um, I I would say in general, speak in general, 
um, and I know I'm guilty of this, but as a, as a mom, I tend to think that all of this is mine to own and I have to do everything. And because I keep it all up here, I can't delegate because I just have it all swirling around. So one of the biggest things that I've done and that I coach people to do is to get all that out of here, get it on paper, develop a cleaning schedule, develop your, your schedule, work with your family. And then once it's all out, you don't have to ask for it all the time or explain what you're having for dinner or explain that today you're cleaning the kitchen or whatever it is. So then it's not nagging. Everybody can see it. They can go help you. They can do it. You can involve everybody in our 20 minute clean at the end of the day. Everybody's involved. Like even my, my son and daughter, they're involved. Um, so it's really how to develop those systems in your home for your family. And then once they're developed, you don't have to keep doing it. Like it makes it so much easier. And to get to that point of being able to keep your house clean in about 20 minutes a day, then you have that 20 minutes, you're done. Your weekends, you can actually enjoy to be with the people you love, to do the things that you love to do, to work on your business. Um, you know, you're not, you're not burdened by it. it. It makes it easier. If you're doing a little bit at a time, then it's so much easier than waiting until the weekend. And now you're spending the entire weekend, you know, cleaning, or you get to the point where you're so overwhelmed, you don't know where to start. So totally. yeah. So beautiful. And I think on one of our calls, we talked about this where you at, at the surface, what you offer is home organization, right? Mm-hmm. For busy families, for working parents, for to, to enjoy all of this time with your family, but like, very close underneath, you truly do help people to create healthier relationships, healthier habits. Uh, You know, it is white space that they can use to connect with who they are and what they're meant to do in the world instead of focusing on all the clutter. Everybody has clutter. Everybody everybody has some level of disorganization, right? Mm -hmm. And it, but I feel like what you do for people is so much deeper than that. And it really is meant for people who are ready to step into that place where they can own everything that's happening in their lives. Not just like physical ownership, but like own the fact that they are going to proactively create the mental, physical, emotional, spiritual environment that allows them to be amazing friends, family members, parents. And it, it's so, what you do is so powerful and so beautiful. And I'm just like, I'm so thrilled that you are doing this in the world that you're like, bye job. This is what I'm here to do. And, and it's happening. So awesome. We're doing it. We're doing it. Yes. Awesome. So, uh, if people are like, okay, girl, I'm sold. Where do I sign up? Where can people learn more about all of your services and what you do? Yeah. Um, so one of the best places is going to my site, homeintentionally.com. It's looking good, by the way. Thanks. So it's a work in progress, but we're getting there. Taking yep. so much feedback from the community. So I'm, I'm very excited. Very excited. Check it out. Um, go there. Go to my Facebook community, Home Intentionally. You can look at my page home intentionally as well. I like to keep it simple, um, not to confuse you, just home intentionally. That's all you need to know. Um, and you can find me and I am, you can jump on a call with me. You can see all the services that are available anywhere that you're at. We can, we can work through it. I am a master at small spaces and small budgets. So don't let being, you know, organization of, all of the things that we tell ourselves, like, I don't have enough money. I don't have enough time. I don't have enough space. I, whatever it is, um, kind of ditch those a little bit and just be open to what you could have. If you just like, like this course, I just had to be open to what I could build in eight weeks and just do it. Love it. Well, thank you so much for sharing with us today. And we really just want to honor you too. You're so open about sharing your story and about mm-hmm. the your own struggles and challenges that you've overcome and the way that you, you're you constantly turning like your mess. This is like a perfect analogy, like your mess into <laughs> your message. And yeah. it's, it's just, it's so inspiring and it's really, um, it, I'm so 
grateful that we have this opportunity for people to hear. Cause I know that people are listening to this and being like, Oh my gosh, that is like, that is my struggle. And whenever I hear you speak, I'm like, Oh my God, like it's the, it's the things that we kind of sometimes struggle in silence about too, of like, Mm -hmm. like, Oh, we just think like that we're, we're, we have to nag to get our way in the household, (laughs) especially as parents. Right. And like, you know, I think that that, um, division of labor issue that have is Mm -hmm. so prevalent, but we don't talk about it that much because we just feel like, Oh, it's just something that we just try to deal with or get through. And so as I said, you are so much more than a home organization expert. You really do help people to heal their relationships and create that. I love the way Pua said white space because man, yeah. oh, we can all just feel that. So yeah. thank you so much for for sharing your story and, and just for being so true to yourself and being such a bold, brave, badass out there in the world. Just uh, giving, you know, you talked about feeling like, oh, I guess I needed permission. Ha ha. But right, like all of us, right? You yep. shining your light, you're giving other people permission. And uh, that's, that's, the, that's the mission we're all on. So <laughs> Yeah. Well, thank you so much. We're going to send everybody your way. Any final thoughts for our audience? Just, I say, be a problem solver. Um, If there are things in your life that cause you frustration, no matter how small they seem, you know, like if it's that every day you wake up and you can't find the lotion and that's frustrating to you, like, Take a second instead of pushing it off and doing it every day and having that constant frustration that builds up. So no matter how small it is, maybe take some time, make a list of just the smallest things that bother you because they're not small because they're affecting you. They're affecting your health. They're creating stress. They're affecting your relationships. Um, So make a true intention to say, if this is something, although small, that's bothering me, how can I fix it? And it might be as simple as you you know, get a couple more lotions and one's in your bedroom and one's in the bathroom and one's in the living room, whatever it is. Um, But be creative, use your imagination and just let yourself have what you need because you know exactly what's going to create that sense of freedom and happiness in your life. A lot of times we just don't allow ourselves to do it. So just solve the problems today that you have and don't let them continue to go off and cause further issues for you. (laughs) Wow. <laughs> I'm like, so brilliant. I'm thinking, I'm like, okay, I've got definitely some things that I'm going to do as soon as we hang up today. So thank you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Let me know if you need help. I'm always I sure here. Will. I will for sure be messaging That's you like, like the best thing about your community too, is that sometimes yeah. we're so close to our problems that we're just, I always think about that story, Pua, about the fan. Remember the fan? Yeah. Of like being like you're hot every night and like you realize that. Yeah just need to like turn the fan on right there. And sometimes we're so close to, we're so used to our problem and the habit of our problem that we don't see the solution right in front of us. And sometimes having a community or another set of eyes or just someone to reflect this back is all we need to be like, Oh gosh, why didn't I do that a long time ago? (laughs) I was thinking about that. You, and this was something we used to teach actually in corporate, right? Like there are Mm -hmm. those little like low level discomforts that we settle for and we live mm-hmm. with every day and they're almost not even in our consciousness because we've lived with it for so long and mm-hmm. rather than like sleeping because you're hot instead of like at every single night sacrificing your quality of sleep instead of just getting up and creating more temporary discomfort for long-term like yeah. ease right yeah. we're so yeah. weird humans are yeah. so weird we need you <laughs> thank you <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Everybody Uh, should, if you're not enrolled in the program or you haven't taken it, everybody should do so because B2B is awesome (laughs) and it will just change your life. So Mm -hmm. end the year really strong. (laughs) No, no, they didn't, but it'll end. I mean, think about it. Starting December 4th, you'll already be in an awesome place by 2019. So do it. There's no reason to not do it. 
<laughs> oh, well, we just adore you. We're so, we're so grateful that you took inspired action to reach out to us and to get connected. <laughs> and like, look at the, the, just, it's been a joy to witness your journey and seeing what you've created in two and a half months. Holy moly. We can't wait to see what's next for you. And we're, we're excited to be here in your corner, supporting you all the way. So everybody get connected to Ashley and girl, we'll be talking to you real soon. (laughs) Love you. (laughs) Love you too. Bye. We hope you enjoyed this episode with Ashley Strong. You can check out everything that Ashley is up to at homeintentionally.com. And if you're ready to make your next two months as impactful and transformative as Ashley has, definitely find out more about our eight-week program, Broke Ass to Badass, which begins December 4th. Doors are closing November 28th. So now is the time to find out more and jump on board. Join us. It's going to be amazing. We'll will be at your side. This is an experience like no other. So jump on in, brokeass2badass.com.